Hey there, my name is Promise, and today I'd like to offer you a few tips that will help you in your Age of Wonders 4 playthroughs. The goal of this video is to provide new players with some direction and to highlight some easily overlooked mechanics that might even surprise 4X strategy veterans. If you're looking for a set of dedicated tutorial videos, I'd strongly recommend visiting the official Age of Wonders 4 YouTube channel for a playlist that I and two other YouTubers created. Now, with all that said, let's jump right into this list of 10 essential tips. Develop your cities for growth. Your cities are your primary source of resources, and the faster they grow, the sooner you can set up an economy to overwhelm your opponents. Most of the time, this means spending your first turns focused on generating food, production, and gold, in that order. Food helps you grow your population, and the more population you have, the more territories you can annex into your city's domain. This increases your resource generation, claims rare resources, and expands your borders. Production, on the other hand, will help you construct buildings faster, which also generates more resources and unlocks the power of your cities. Thus, both food and production are early investments that will pay off with larger, stronger cities in the long term. Gold, on the other hand, does not generate more resources. However, you're going to need a lot of it, so it's still wise to focus on this early. Gold is used for army upkeep, events, diplomacy, and more, but most importantly, you need gold to construct most buildings. Having a lot of production won't do you much good if you don't have the gold generation to support it. Annexing mines or constructing markets will help you keep momentum as you grow your cities. Once you've set up your cities for rapid growth, you'll be in a strong position to build out other resources and specialize your economy. Stability boosts your growth. City stability is a mechanic that's easy to overlook as you develop your city, at least until you go into the negative and have to worry about unrest. Negative stability will drag down your income by 10, 20, or even 50%, depending on how bad things get. If you see your city going into the negative, you should definitely try to turn that around. But even if you are not in the negative, it's still worth investing in more stability, because high stability will boost your food, production, and draft income by 5, 10, or 15%. This is not to say that stability is more important than research or mana or other resources. You'll have to use your best judgment, but ignoring stability until it's a problem would be a mistake. Build special province improvements. There are so many buildings you can construct in your city center, you might forget that you can build special improvements in your provinces. Scroll down in your building menu to see your options. The advanced improvements you can construct will depend on your culture or the tomes of magic you've unlocked. These are situational and won't always be a high priority, but depending on the terrain or your playstyle, they can be extremely powerful. As an example, if you have the Tome of Pyromancy and a lot of foresters placed close together, you may want to build a Ritual Pyre, which generates mana for every adjacent forester. Other improvements might give you more gold, draft, production, etc. Read the terrain, decide which province improvements will give you the most benefit to your economy, and factor that into your larger strategy. More casting points equals more spells. Veterans of the Age of Wonders series will be familiar with this mechanic already, but new players may not know that you have two different types of casting points, World Map and Combat. In order to cast any spell, you'll need to pay a mana cost and use a certain number of casting points. In the World Map, the number of casting points you have access to during each turn will determine how quickly you can cast powerful spells. The more casting points you have, the less turns it will take to cast. Similarly, in combat, you'll have a limited number of casting points to spend during the battle. Once these are used up, you won't be able to cast any more spells even if you have the mana to spare, so you'll need to choose between casting a few powerful spells or a lot of weaker spells. Both world map and casting points can be increased with certain cultures, affinity improvements, rare resources, wizard tower upgrades, and more. Excavate the Underground if you plan to expand in the underground, or perhaps your empire started there, you'll need to use excavation to open new areas and find more resources. Excavation can be unlocked in the general affinity tree at the cost of 75 Imperium. Once this ability is unlocked, you can move an army adjacent to a province covered by soft earth and click this little button on the right to excavate it. Very easy to miss. Be warned, when you excavate, you might find treasures or you might find hostile enemies. Keep soldiers nearby to deal with new threats. Defeated heroes give items. As you fight other players or free cities, you'll hopefully defeat their most powerful heroes in battle. Defeated heroes can be captured and placed in your prison, or they might be killed and placed in your crypt. 
In either case, you should consider freeing those heroes from your prison or selling their remains. This will allow you to claim whatever items those heroes had equipped when you defeated them. You can then use those items to increase the power of your own heroes. If you're unsure if you want to bother freeing or selling a defeated hero, you can inspect them first to determine what items you would receive. Some affinities oppose others. There are six branches of magic in the game, and they are not all compatible with each other. Order opposes chaos, nature opposes shadow, and materium opposes the astral. This mechanic mostly impacts your diplomacy. If, for example, you're playing as an industrial empire and you meet another player with the mystic culture, they will probably be hostile to you for the rest of the game. Understanding the different axes of magic will help you decide which players or free cities are worth befriending and which will be lost causes. In some cases, if there's a specific player you really want to ally, you may want to take that into account as you choose your tomes of magic or upgrade your heroes. Affinity points unlock stronger tomes. As you're researching different tomes of magic, your progress with each affinity will unlock higher tier tomes. Eventually, you'll have access to tier 3 tomes of magic for every affinity, regardless of how you develop your empire. If you're specifically trying to reach tier 4 and tier 5 tomes, however, and they aren't appearing for you, check your affinity levels for that specific type of magic. You need 6 affinity points to unlock tier 4 tomes, and 8 affinity points to unlock the tier 5 tome. If you don't meet that requirement, well then that's your problem. Get extra points in that affinity, either by researching past tomes or developing hero abilities, etc., and they'll appear for you at the next opportunity. Certain actions require heroes. As you develop your empire, you'll discover ancient wonders that will need to be explored before you can annex it into your domain. Most of the time, that exploration will lead to a battle with the guardians of that site, and you'll need to clear them out. However, simply sending an army of cultural or magical units will not be enough. You will need a hero leading that army to even set foot in the wonder. Similarly, if you want to initiate a siege against an enemy city, that action will require a hero-led army. Keep this in mind as you plan your army movements and make sure you have enough heroes to go around. Clear Bronze Infestations Early Infestations are like barbarian camps in Age of Wonders 4. If left alone, they will eventually spawn enemies that will raid your cities and harass your armies. These infestation camps come in bronze, silver, and gold tiers. The higher the tier, the more dangerous the army. Silver and gold encampments are dangerous and will require strong armies to defeat, but bronze encampments can usually be defeated very early in the game. If you see one close to your starting city, consider yourself lucky. Prioritize killing it with your main army. These grant a lot of experience to level your hero, powerful hero items, and extra resources to boost your city. This concludes my list of 10 essential tips for Age of Wonders 4. There's obviously a lot more that I could talk about, but between these tips and the tutorials I helped create for the official Age of Wonders 4 YouTube channel, this should be enough to set you up for success in your first playthroughs. In a future video, I'll offer you a list of more advanced tips that will be useful once you've gotten some experience with the game. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Please consider hitting the like button or leaving a comment if you found this video helpful, and subscribe for my future content. My name is Provis, and I'll see you next time.